The streets in Cambodia's capital, Phnom Penh, would normally be thronged with tourists, but even though there isn't an official lockdown, they're deserted. These images are from two days ago, taken by Sebastian Maro, who heads a nonprofit called Friends International. Everyone's very nervous about survival. Hotels are closed, the restaurants are closed. The garment factories, which were, which are the number one industry in the region, uh, had problems getting raw material uh, from China. So they, they started closing also. A lot of people lost their, their job. For 25 years, Maro's group has provided vocational training to thousands of young men and women, notably in restaurants, including those it runs. They've been sent home with small care packages of food and hygiene supplies for those from the neediest families. We're bracing. And the numbers are still low, the official numbers um, in the region. Um, but we know that it, it's just a question of time. As of Friday, April 17th, Cambodia reported 122 coronavirus cases and no deaths. Its larger neighbor, Thailand, had 2,700 cases and 47 deaths, much of them in and around the capital, Bangkok, where we reached well-known social entrepreneur Michai Viravaidia. What can you tell us about the mood in Thailand overall? Well, in urban setting, it's a bit tight. People are concerned because they're seeing the level of unemployment uh, right around them. And as for rural people, they're much more relaxed. Michai has focused most of his energy in recent years on bolstering the rural economy in a country whose prosperity has been largely urban. He set up the Michai Bamboo School in one of Thailand's poorest regions, trying to inspire students in agriculture technology and to entrepreneurship and service in rural communities. Most of the 180 students have been sent home, leaving about 25 whose circumstances don't allow it, Michai says. They've maintained the school's extensive horticulture labs and vegetable gardens, sewn masks, and prepared meals to distribute to community elders. And our students are doing community service, providing seeds for the elderly people to grow. And we're keeping in touch with all students and sending them seeds and masks and anything else that they would like. We can send them a bit, uh, some budget to cover their costs. Another school project we've profiled before that's been put on hold is the Citizens Foundation Schools in Pakistan. Founded in 2010, it's grown to 800 schools addressing the serious deficiencies in public education, especially for girls in Pakistan. Co-founder Mushtaq Chapra says students and their teachers have become ambassadors for the prevention campaign. Health and hygiene is a very important part of the curriculum of the, uh, of the education program of TCF. And uh, these uh, teachers and these uh, students are well aware of uh, how hygiene is, is in this, especially in this uh, epidemic. So uh, they are explaining uh, all the uh, methods of hand washing or keeping clean or staying distant from each other. That's easier preached than practiced, he adds, in the poorest communities, particularly urban slums where both water and space are in short supply. That's also true in the country's healthcare system. We shot these images in January outside Karachi's main public hospitals. Thousands of people who'd stood in line for hours for the chance to see a doctor later in the day. This is the first time we have seen such a thing. And we see how uh, helpless we are. Uh, you know, even the developed nations are struggling in the healthcare system. So Pakistan will not, not uh, be any better. As of April 17th, Pakistan had reported more than 7,000 coronavirus cases with 135 deaths. The worry about a lack of resources is shared across sub-Saharan Africa, making public education critical in prevention and containment efforts. We reached Molly Melching, founder of the human rights group Tostan in Dakar, Senegal, where she has lived for four decades. I remember finding out on March 2nd when we had our first case, I said, well, how many um, ventil uh, ventilators are there in the country? And they said four. Four. 
Melching's nonprofit is best known for helping thousands of West African villages abandon the age-old practice of female genital cutting. Engaging local communities and leaders has been key to the group's success, and Melching says they're using similar strategies with coronavirus. We're worried about handshaking, which is a social norm here. The welcoming that you give to someone, it's just so important. And so to tell people to stop doing that is very hard. So, you know, we pretty much have adopted uh, this of way of saying hello. That's so, so important. To get it out on the radio, perhaps to get the videos out on WhatsApp, that they could at least um, see people whom they respect. For example, we're using religious leaders. And how to convey the idea of viral transmission from coughs and sneezes? Tostan went back to an earlier hygiene campaign against diarrheal disease. When people don't go to school and they don't learn some of the basics of hygiene in terms of what are germs, and so people I think are looking, where are these droplets? I don't see them. We would put a bowl of water and then put some perfume in it and say, look, on your hands, you, do, is there anything on them? And they'd say, no. And then we said, well, smell them. Ah, <laughs> you have something on your hands, but you can't see them, but it is there. Senegal has 342 cases and two deaths. Like much of the region, it is in virtual lockdown, counting as much on hope and luck as science to contain the spread of coronavirus.